Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install the MotoFab two inch uh, blocks and these uh, shock extensions into the rear of my Silverado. Uh, in the last video, we finished up the front or maybe it's the next video, I'm not sure, but it, it should be up by now. But uh, we got the front all done and now I'm going to uh, show you guys how to install it in the back. Well, let's check out what we got in the boxes here. This should be extremely simple. Fingers crossed that this should be very, very simple. Continuing on with my uh, idea that we're doing this the proper way, I picked up some of these um, rear shock extenders so that way they won't become overextended and wear out quicker. Definitely pick some of these up. They're super cheap. I think I paid like 30 bucks for that kit. And uh, I mean, you could make this if you were good enough uh, with you know metal fabrication. These are the blocks themselves. And as you can tell, I've already opened the box and kind of figured some stuff out on my own, trying to be a little bit more preemptive about this. Um, so like I said, from what I've read, these should be extremely easy to install. Um, one side has this little nub. I think that might be like actually the bottom. So you need to remove the rear, the, the factory rear block completely. Don't stack these because then you'll it'll be too high. Um, I think in some applications you can stack them, but this is not one of those applications. One washer per nut. There we go. U bolts come in a separate box. Two per side. Really high quality stuff here. I mean for what 100 115 120 bucks this is this is a pretty high quality kit i don't think you can get really much better than this i mean you might have different you know colors or, or whatever but see even this stuff not even the same company all the all the coatings match and it's just black and simple i just wrote this on here because i've never done this before and it's kind of the same thing that i do when building engines you know everything has an orientation and i want to just you know get it right we're going to jump over to the truck and we're gonna start pulling stuff apart. I'm just gonna do one side at a time. And so let's move forward. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the reason why I always, always go ahead and do one side before I show you guys how to do anything. Here's the block, the four bolts and washers, and the two shackles. All right, or u bolt. sorry. So, oh, and here's the uh, shock extension, obviously. Uh, also, fun fact, all of these nuts and bolts, whether they meant to or not, these two different, totally different companies, they're all 22 millimeter, which is just fantastic. Makes the job go by super easy. Every single bit of literature, where is it? So I read the bloody instructions, okay? Looked up videos on my own. No one talks about this. This is a 2014 Silverado. The only thing that I can guess that goes through my mind is that they use some stuff from like 2013s, like the older body style. No one shows this that I can figure out. This is the factory rear block, okay? If you notice, this has the stud going up through it. In all the videos, there is no stud. They just knock this sucker loose with a, with a dead gum crowbar and then they slot the new one in super easy well the 2014 mine for whatever reason and it's not like it's like a, a sub model it is a z71 with a v8 and a four-wheel drive towing package i mean it's a nice truck but for some reason these ones came with these weird blocks it's almost like this shouldn't exist but it for me it does so saving you guys some headache i had to run to the auto parts store and i specifically went to um, advanced auto got to give credit where credit is due and I had to pick up these bolts right here. These are leaf spring stud bolts. It's not a stud, but it's not a bolt either. It's kind of weird. It's just got this little thing right here, which equates to that guy. So it makes total sense, right? It, it works great, and that's why I'm showing it to you. Part number, this is an AutoCraft part, and it's an A as in Alpha, C as in Charlie, one three one two eight zero these do work on all the silverados i'm sure only thing is is that it does not come with a lock washer or a normal washer i threw those on maybe a dab of a uh, loctite too if you're if you're keen enough and the only other thing you got to do is is you need to get out your grinder because once you get this installed there's about that much thread left over i just chopped it off so that way it wasn't so ugly under there and if I ever have to take it off, then the nut will help chase the threads. So I'm not worried about it. And this kit was less than $10. 
so I'm really not worried about it. If I need, if I ever need it again, I know where to get it. Once you have everything you need, jack up the truck. Once you've done that, we're gonna pull the wheel off, obviously. Like I said in a previous video, new tires are on the way. I'm gonna pull my ear protection off. So a lot of, uh, golly, I need to paint these too. Man, probably just need to go in and replace the shocks. Rear shocks aren't too expensive. A lot of people, when they do this, they have lifts and stuff. We ain't that fancy and that's okay. I've just got my spare little jack here. So uh, is, this, is this something you can do at home? Yeah, absolutely, sure, why not? But it, it does take some some tools right i've been coming up under here under the shock perch and i just kind of hit it right about here to where it's not in the way so that way i can install the shock mount so i just put pressure on it right so all the factory stuff is 21 that's the only real difference so grab yourself a 21 Throw that into your impact. If you don't have this, you don't necessarily have to have this, but it sure makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Stay over there, please. Ear protection on. Dirt flying everywhere. You will not reuse any of this. Old U bolts out. Gotta. Uh, you keep this, obviously. Reuse it. I'm not gonna throw these away. I always end up finding uses for stuff like that. Next thing you're gonna need is a 15. Because in our, in, in my specific application, and if this helps you too, please subscribe and like the video. I really would appreciate it. We have to take this off in my specific application will not be reused, obviously. You gotta take off the uh, rear shot. So 21, and then uh, get yourself a 21 wrench. Grab the, the nut on the front there. Hitting it from the back. And then, so hang on to that. You're still gonna use that. Then what I like to do is take the uh, crow's foot end And then you can, hope you guys can see this. Just shove it on there and then help to kind of pull it out. Just like that. The shock will try to fight you a little bit. Just don't even worry about it right now. Just hang on to that stuff. Throw some grease or WD-40 on it. Now we're gonna slowly just use our old jack here and just kind of let everything fall down real easy. And then I feel like the jack is the easiest way to do this job, truly. Pull these spacers off, don't lose them. See, same situation over here. So old block out, get this guy. This is a 14, and that's why I put a washer and a lock washer on it. I just want to make sure it's going to be nice and solid. Going to go ahead and grab all the hardware. I'm going to install this first. Uh, it takes a little bit of a takes a little bit of muscle to do this, but I've got faith in you. Get your spacers. Um, the the longer one goes on the bottom, then kind of lift up. There we go, got the stud in. Okay, once you kind of got everything lined up, start jacking back up. There we go. Once you've got it like that, you're pretty much home free. Throw your washer on. I, like I said, this kit does not come with a washer or lock washer. I highly recommend finding one and just throwing it on there. Now you just want to make sure everything seats back in just like that where it's supposed to. Then you can start jacking this back up just until the point to where it is close. And you wanna run this down. Grab your 14. 
then grab your 14 millimeter wrench because your deep well probably won't go down all the way. Now that you got that torque down, I'm gonna come in here and just kinda clearance it just, just a little bit. Don't hit your brake line. All right, now once, if you ever have to take that nut off, it will chase the thread, so don't worry about that. So now that that's on there real good, you can drop the rear axle down. Then you wanna make sure you put this in the correct way, obviously. Slot goes into the bottom. There we go. <laughs> We're gonna put the shackles on and they just slide over the top just like so. Really, really easy suspension system with leaf springs. Old but good. And then we gotta take our factory piece here and slot it back up. This can take a little bit of finagling. Make sure everything's still on the perch. Now, if you're lucky, it'll just sit there and be content with life. Sometimes it wants to be a pain, but just get all these nuts and washers started and you're almost home free. Then grab your 22, and just start cranking down on this stuff. All right, I don't, I don't uh, crank them all the way down just yet. I want to get the, uh, the, sus the suspension extension on there. Just don't let these lines get too tight. So then you've got your shock extension here. These are 22s as well. Just remember the factory one is a 21. So the shock is pretty easy to manipulate by hand. So you just push it out of the way. Then just spot the new extension in there, just like so. Get the nut and washer started. There we go. And grab this 22. We're gonna lock down the back of it and hit it from the front. Then, take the shock and twist it and get it as lined up with the new stuff as you can. Bring the bolts in and once it's through, you should be home free. Then you can let the suspension droop and then you can hit the uh, the U-bolt nuts one more time. Oh, and that's it, you guys. So that's the install of the uh, rear blocks on the 2014 Chevy. Uh, so I hope this information with this stud right here helped you. Anyway, from here, you guys, throw your wheels back on and take it for a test drive. And uh, the reason I was trying to get this done so quick is I'm going to get an alignment tomorrow. So now everything should be copacetic and I don't have to worry about nothing, hopefully for a while. If any problems come up, I will of course let you know. Uh, but until then you guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if it helps you, like it if it helps you, share it if it helps you, and I will see you next time. Have a great night. Oh, and uh, one last thing, don't uh, lift or level your truck if you don't think you can get it out of your garage after the fact, because we will all be laughing at you.